Hello? Nothing stays the same. We are forever changing and morphing. Hello to the family. How are you out there? Well, I decided that I was going to make a video here for you all and everything. And uh, um, this video is very important to all of the dreadlock people. Let me see if I can get a name for you all. The Dreadloids. <laughs> okay, this is a video for you all. It's a very important video. Especially those who are gifted. Okay? We receive a lot of information from these organs. That's what they are. They're organs. A lot of people say, dang, mama, how you know all of that? I had one person out there, and you know who you are. How would you know this? I did a reading for you. How would you know this? That's what she said. Are you spying on me? How would you know that? I hear it all the time. No, I cannot spy on the world. I am gifted with sight. But do you know how it comes? I'm thinking, now this is my um, take on it. I think these have mystical sight, supernatural sight, the dreadlocks. Samson could not cut that hair off because that's where his power was. It was in his hair. If you cut your hair off, you cut off any transmittance that you would have with, guess what? The divine. This is my connection there. Even if they're gone, I'm still going to have a connection with them because the ethereal copy remains... Am I right? All of you dreadloids out there, okay? You gifted people. I noticed that a lot of dreadloids are the ones that are, uh, and I said L-O-I-D-S, not the other way around, okay? I noticed that um, most of the dreadloids are gifted with the ability to you know, create beautiful paintings or, or sketches or sculptures or any type of artistic expression. Artistic. A-R-T-I-S-T-I-C-S. -I 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 and if I spelled it wrong, y'all can respell it. Artistic. Not autistic, but artistic abilities or in the artist. I don't know if you do murals. I don't know if you do tiles. Or all of you with these trades of crafty skills are artistic beings. And a lot of them are dreadlock beings. You'll know who you are here by those certain attributes because dreadlock people are not concerned. I'm not talking about the fakers, the ones who... Um, they're just doing it because somebody else is doing it. I'm talking about those people who are doing it because they are called to do it. You understand what I'm saying? You all have the natural ability to express, to express beautiful works of art. And it reminds me of, of an artist that just passed away. Her name was uh, Tamara. She had some of the most beautiful paintings and Ajay was definitely in her artwork. And thank you, Tiff, for, you know, explaining to me what the Ajay is. But she had the beautiful birds and everything. And I know I have Ajay. And Ajay is an expression of Ifa. You know, because I love birds. Birds are messengers. And, um, you know, and I want to incorporate it in my paintings, too. So you're going to see me, you know, uh, 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 working a lot on things that matter because time is limited. I think our time is limited. I don't think we have much time to horseplay around. And there are some things I want to do. I want to write some books, some hoodoo books of some things that I've experienced in my life and my uh, ancestors have given to me and thank you uh miss flower bomb uh for um also uh giving me the uh inspiration to 
want to do this. I also want to do some bluesy things on guitar. You know, um, I, I want to do some of those, maybe an album or something, a bluesy album, a hoodoo bluesy album. And I want to do some things. So I, I just feel like, you know, time is too short to just waste it on absolutely nothing. So I need to be incorporating all of this. I definitely am excited about the Ajay and incorporating those birds in my work. And I can't even think of that lady's last name. Her name was Tamara. I can't even remember her last name, but uh, she did beautiful work in her work. She said she wanted to make them kings and queens. So it's just a lot of work of, you know, just, you know, Africans, you know, uh, uh, with, with, with beautiful garments on. I mean, the work is just phenomenal, but she passed away uh, sometime this year. That's the best I can tell you. If I think of her name, I'll tell you. But I can't. I can't even think of her name. And 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 it's hard. I I keep forgetting her last name. I can't think of her whole name. That's what I want to say. So look, dreadlords, protect your sight, your supernatural sight. We have physical sight here. And we have mystical sight here that connects us with supernatural uh, sight. And we have our third eye here. We once upon a time wore third eye here. But, um, you know, uh, through evolution, the um, third eye was pulled back into the pineal gland. Oh, gosh. So, anyways, I was looking at something out there. Okay. So, anyway, so protect your supernatural sight. How do you protect it? Make sure that you are constantly washing these constantly. Why? Because, I just got to wash your minds, y'all. Uh, because there are things that get connected in here, genetic material, okay, from other beings can get in these. And they can interfere with some things. It just depends. I don't know how it would affect you. But you want these constantly cleaned. How did I clean mines? I cleaned mines, mines with a ACV wash and baking soda. Okay? Aren't they beautiful? And it's good to keep them... And that AC, because it vinegar is a natural mystical cleansing anyway. Okay. You want genetic material from other beings out of your hair. You there are thought forms that get into these. Okay. You want to remove that and refresh it with herbs and i'll tell you if you want to text me what kind of herbs i put in it and everything that helps me with my sight that protects me that do all of those wonderful things that having these do okay it's a beautiful day to be a dreadloid a beautiful day and it definitely like when i wash them you know, um, I get a lot of, of beautiful melodies and everything from the divine, for my guitar, for my keyboard, for musical inspiration and beautiful ideas to do artwork and everything like that. And um, so you don't want to be carrying the weight on your, your shoulders, especially when you're dealing with, you know, working with people, helping them to solve problems and stuff like that. You definitely want to make sure you are washing that out to protect yourself, to make sure you well. Because I do have people who may be having some problems with uh, supernatural forces and everything. So you want to make sure that you're doing a thorough cleansing. And when you're doing a reason, reading, making sure they are thoroughly wrapped when you're doing readings. But when I'm doing my readings, I know that to some extent these do assist me with... Uh, my work but anyway so anyway so it's just supposed to be a video about the importance of making sure that you are taking your time and each individual lock is getting a thorough ACV 
rinse you're doing that now i gotta protect my crown and everything like that from here especially if i'm gonna go into a facility where there's hospitals doctor's offices nursing homes if you're going into those places your dreadlocks must be protected now right now my crown is protected but protected but if i was to go into a hospital or a doctor's office or a nursing home or a facility where there are sick people these will have to be thoroughly wrapped i have made the mistake in going into public places and not protecting these and keeping them uh you know wrapped because i i'm a healer and my presence alone makes an imprintation of all of my ideals my weaknesses my strengths my talents everything that is me i am making a imprintation over everything i walk under walk above i walk around it's true i'm the leader a lot of people are gonna say oh no you ain't yeah i am because most people they come to me and they adopt the things that i do if they're not doing anything but just talking about what i do lets me know i'm the leader and the leader does not have the luxuries of making mistakes because you're the leader. The leader cannot go wayward or do anything wrong because everyone is watching the leader. I'm talking these gems and jewels for those who feels like, like sometimes the microscope is always on you. It's because you're the leader. You can take these gems and jewels to your jobs in the workplaces in your homes, with your neighbors, in the grocery stores, in the shopping places, meetings. Take this information with you. Your companies, take it with you. You're judged under the microscope because you are a leader. Because if you was up, wouldn't nobody be thinking about what you do in the first place. It'll be irrelevant. I was told you got a big old bright light that shine. Oh my God, I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh my God, your light is just shining as soon as you walk in the room. Everybody is, their attention is on you, whether it's not, it, it's physical or it's supernatural. Your energy demands attention. And when you're in a place like that, you best better believe you will be judged. This is information for those who are scratching their head. I don't understand. African American woman or African woman, you're under the microscope. You're going to get the blame for everything because you're the responsible party. It's true. Everybody's talking about the African American woman and the African woman. Tell me I'm lying. Everybody's watching you. The ball is in your court, believe it or not. I'm talking from a, a, a well. You could you could talk from a general aspect, but definitely from a spiritual aspect. You're the leader. Isn't that crazy? As those words flow from my mouth, people are gonna be coming to you. Everywhere I go, people are coming to me until there's a point. I mean, I can go to the grocery stores. People are coming to me. Hey, look, check this out. I'm a formal addict. People talk about things that folks don't naturally talk about with people they're sharing this information with me it's been going it's getting really deep it's been going on now heavily for the last um i say last two months and i don't care what you say i don't care if you're a young person and you say oh, you don't believe it it's okay but it's something about being 50 and beyond it's different than it was when I was in my teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s, it's different. And you won't be able to understand that until you hit 50. Just like if a 60-year-old woman was to tell me some things about 60. I ain't trying to understand that. I'm not trying to say, well, I already got that now. Because you know you have to cure. Okay? Like Orson Welles says, we'll sell no wine before, time, before it's time. We'll sell no wine. Before it's time. As wine ages, it's a taste that a young wine don't have. Okay? It's different when you're 50. Trust me. 
Because at 50, I have folks coming to me from just everywhere. Left, right, back, front, top, bottom. Hey, look, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, wow. I was asking Mr. Wheeler, why are these people sharing all of their, um, all of their, um, their secrets? I'm a complete stranger. Things that you just can't tell people. They feel comfortable telling me. Because they see something within me, especially at 50. You understand what I'm saying? That they ain't necessarily seeing nowhere else. Okay? Women, it's your time. I'm talking to women of all walks of life, all races and nationalities. It's your time. It's the time of the divine. The woman has the closest connection with the divine than anything because her womb is the stargate. Her womb is heaven. It's where life comes from. Hello? So I hope this is an inspirational video for you all. And uh, thank you for all of the text and the calls that you give me. Uh, uh, especially women. Thank you to men. Especially women. Thank you so much. Because when I first came here, I didn't know that I was going to be changing lives for the better. Okay? Some for the good, some for the bad. Because everybody don't want no truth now. Everybody don't want it. Everybody ain't able to receive truth. I'm in the truth right now. Okay? So anyway, so you all... You all have a happy holidays. I know I would not want to associate it with the uh, stigmatism of what these holidays really mean, like Christmas. So that's why people say uh, have a happy Xmas to take the Christ part off of it. I say happy uh, 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 day off of the plantation. It's just a time where, you know, for me, myself personally, my children will gather with me and we'll have an amazing time when they're off away from the plantation thank you so much and kenya would like to express her gratitude for all of you all who have you know stretched your arms and gave her one big hug and so much encouragement for her graduating from nursing school she really appreciates it me and my family, Mr. Willie, and my daughter, and my son, and my son-in-laws, and my daughter-in-laws, and all of my family would just like to just tell all of you, thank you. I love you all. Hello? Kenya, y'all remember baby Kenya growing up? Baby Kenya? Yeah, she, she's become a nurse, and um, she has had three job offers. They want her to just all take them at one time. She's the only one person. She said, Mama, she said, it, it, you know, all three of those, one is on a heart unit, one is uh, 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 on a heart surgery, uh, telemetry, and med surge, but she wants to be selective, and so she's still saying, well, you know, if they throwing them at me like that, I kind of want to just, you know, make sure I'm making, making a better decision. I told her to do psych nursing. I was a psych nurse, and I, it was a blast. I love my patients. Um... One of my uh, favorite patients, um, and I worked at Bryce Hospital, which is no longer now. Look up Bryce Hospital. A lot of people go in there because it's a haunted, abandoned place. But I once worked at Bryce Hospital with the mentally ill. Um, I once worked at uh, on the site ward at Caraway Hospital, which is no longer in business uh, at this time. And a lot of people go in there. That's a haunted place, too. But... I worked on site on the site ward and I love my patients. Now I know they say that they can be particularly dangerous, but I have never had uh, uh, any kind of confrontation a confrontation with uh, a site person or a, a person who was uh, psychologically uh, disabled. Uh, never. Um, they they were some of the nicest people. Uh, the biggest challenges, if anything, that I've had is working in a nursing home, and it's it was no physical violence, but it was just you know the patients were very very honest. Now we we don't call them patients in a nursing home. We call them residents. They were very honest. So you you don't want to get your feelings hurt. Do not work in a nursing home. 
But anyways, um, I never ever had, I, I think that one of the worst things that did happen to me when I worked as a nurse in a nursing home was this, I was like, in my, uh, I said mid twenties, Mary J. Blige had just, uh, she had first, she just came out with her song, Real Love. I, I, real love. I'm searching for some real love. Someone to give my heart to real love. Oh, I'm searching for a real love. Anyway, I'm running out of breath. But anyway, so I remember that song came out and I was working in this nursing home and um, not bragging on myself, but I was really drop dead gorgeous. You know, I, I, if you want to kind of know what I look like, I was a tall, slender girl with, a, uh, and I'm going to show y'all pictures, with uh, features like Barbie. I was a dark skinned uh, 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 Barbie doll. But anyways, you know, uh, um, so I had trouble with men, and I never will forget this one guy. And I remember his name. His name was Mr. Joyner. He just grabbed me and pulled me by my butt and pulled me on, on him, and I had to scream for, for help. This man would not let me go, and he was holding my butt and wouldn't let me go, grinding on me, y'all. And so that was a real bad experience that I had working in a nursing home. <laughs> And so they said he, he was known to do that because they said one woman, she ran out of the building screaming, rape, rape, and she never came back. So after that experience, I was like, I don't want this patient, I mean, this resident, do not do that to me anymore because it was a crazy, old, it was an older guy, he was an old man, the man was in his like 80s, 70s or something like that. And and. And just gonna be honest, it was disgusting. So anyway, so uh, uh, that's that's the worst experience I've ever had in nursing. So the, and you you don't have any rights in nursing because you know um, I had a friend that said she she fist fought a patient uh, or a resident or whatever. But we can't touch a resident. You can't touch them. They can do all kind of violent acts on you, but there's nothing you can do. So that's the downside of nursing that. If somebody was to grab you or try to rape you, which which I didn't get raped or anything like that, he just grabbed me and pulled me up against me and, and was trying to, you know, mess with me like that. You know what I'm saying? It was so disgusting. Oh, my God. I can't even believe I'm telling y'all that. But that was the worst experience I ever had in nursing, and I never worked with him again. But, you know, I could have sued those people. That's a lawsuit. You know what I'm saying? So when young women... You have to protect yourself out there. I already told Baby Kenya to be very careful out there. Protect yourself because, you know, they can be violent to you. There's nothing you can do. They can fight you. They can do whatever they want. Club you across your head. You can't do anything. Look it up. You have no rights. Um, if there is a flood in a nursing home or a fire, you are not to leave out until you get every... Uh, resident or patient out of that, it, that that place if it means that you have to die in the fire you have to if it means you have to be flooded in the flood you have to to not do so is an abandonment of those patients or those residents or you will face repercussions they will take your license and they can prosecute you and lock you up. So it's like you are, when once you go into that, like they lit Ken, Kenya's lantern, and which I had went through that same, that's a ritual, that's a ceremony, meaning that you were sworn to putting your life on the line for the safety of the patient. So think about that. If y'all say, I want to go to nursing school. That's, and I'm telling you, I got on my knees and prayed many a days for my baby. There were times where she said, Mama, I got an exam coming up and I'm really frightened. And a lot of times she would call her the oldest sister, the shortest one. That's her oldest sister. She would call her instead of me. So I wouldn't worry. She would get on her knees. We would get on her physically, get on kneel on our knees and pray to God, you know, that she was able to pass these courses. It was really frightening. It was a roller coaster ride. As she went through school. So now she's getting ready. She's preparing herself to go and get a bachelor's of her bachelor's. That that was associates. 
she's going for the bachelor's of nursing because the facility that she'll be working in requires that all registered nurses have a bachelor's degree. Okay. So it's good. You can take these stepping stones to go from LPN to associates of uh, a registered nurse to bachelor's of nursing to uh, uh, um, nurse practitioner having a master's in nursing. So her ultimate, she says she want to be a nurse practitioner. So her ultimate uh, thing is to go for a uh, nurse practitioner's degree. That's a step up from bachelor's of nurse, nursing. And so, you know, and then you can go in your own private practice. Like, you know, the doctor's office that I go to, that is a nurse practitioner. She has her own private practice and uh, she's gone through the steps to do what she does. And she's pretty good. I love her. I am so thankful to connect with such a wonderful being. And because um, if you're with a doctor that don't care or uh, against you, you can't get well. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't stay well. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all know I got this blood pressure issue. So they have to always keep that under control. I was telling somebody, I was telling y'all that I was going to drop the pharmaceuticals and go uh, totally natural and everything. And, I, and and one of them I did. I'm, I'm taking natural herbs for that one. And so and one somebody out there that's a nurse said, you better be very careful. So... I definitely will be very careful because high blood pressure is very dangerous. They call it the silent killer, but we, you know, that's what runs in my family. Just about everybody in my family have high blood pressure. There are a lot of African Americans or African people who have high blood pressure. It just depends on what you want to call yourself, an African American or an African. What do I call myself? I call myself uh, an indigenous American with African uh, bloodline, which I do have a direct descendant with African uh, bloodline. I am a uh, Liberian, and like I say, I know I'm a hybrid. I know what I am, and uh, so we need to stop bragging about being hybrids. <laughs> you know, hey, honey, I'm a fifth of this and tenth of that and a thirty of that. I'm here today to tell you, you ain't nothing good about that because you had, you have been denied your um birthrights when you're hybrid you have been denied your birthrights anyways y'all i gotta go i just wanted to just say something inspirational to all of the dreadloids all the dreadlock beings and all of my women out there um i would like to talk to you and my man too you know what i'm saying but y'all got to realize i'm a woman first so sometimes i'm gonna talk about talk and say something inspirational for the women does because women are going to come into power get ready it may not be in our lifetime but it's on the way so y'all better scoot over and make some room for them okay y'all like my little outfit i have a long beautiful flowing outfit on isn't it beautiful i'm loving it okay family i gotta go i gotta go bye bye what should I say? Please uh, rate and subscribe. Bye-bye.